So flowing material balance is the next one. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about the flowing material balance. In the discussion earlier on of the analytical solutions for boundary dominated flow, uh, we used the concept of pseudo steady state. And if you remember, pseudo steady state says that the rate of change of the average reservoir pressure is the same as the rate of change of any pressure in the reservoir, provided that we have pseudo steady state conditions, which means we've got constant flow rate and we're in boundary dominated flow. And we showed how we can use that principle to create this concept of a flowing material balance. What I'm going to do now is extend that concept a little bit further. Uh, and I, I think in the develops, developments that we talked about earlier, we really only used it for oil and we generated a flowing material balance uh, plot for oil. Um, we're going to extend the concept now for gas and create uh, this P over Z uh, formulation. And the advantage, of course, of doing a P over Z type uh, interpretation is that everybody knows a P over Z, uh, a classical gas material balance analysis using P over Z versus cumulative production. So if we can apply the same thing for a flowing condition, uh, it's very nice to have because it's, a, it, it's an exact analogy to the classical gas material balance analysis that uh, most reservoir engineers will be familiar with. This concept uh, is not new. It was first proposed uh, in 1998 by Louis Matar and Ralph McNeil, who are both at Fiquette Associates. So the idea has been around a long time. And in fact, this concept has become a, um, a, 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 a staple within the petroleum industry. Uh, lots of um, companies are using this method to do reserves for gas reservoirs. One of the advantages, of course, of a flowing P over Z type analysis uh, over a static P over Z type of analysis is the, is the availability of data. In many cases, particularly in the US, there may be no shut-in data available, and all we have access to is the flowing data. So there's a, a huge practical advantage to being able to use flowing data to conduct the same analysis that previously you'd only be able to do using shut-in data. So there's some economic advantages to doing a, a flowing material balance or flowing P over Z. Okay, if we make the assumption of constant rate, the way that this thing works is very straightforward. Uh, we simply have constant rate production and we'll simply record the flowing pressure and this can be at the wellhead. Uh, usually it's going to be at the wellhead. Um, if we want to make it a little more accurate, we can convert it to bottom hole conditions. But you'll get the same trend even if you don't convert it to uh, bottom hole conditions. So we can measure the, the, the flowing pressure at the wellhead. Uh, the Z factor is easy to get. Remember, uh, you know, Z is just a, a property that can be looked up in a table. If I know the pressure and I know the gas composition, the temperature, I can find the Z factor. So I can get this number, I can plot these data. Um, if I'm in boundary dominated flow and all, everything's working the way it should, this should make a straight line. And the straight line will have some sort of slope. It's the slope that I'm really interested in. Okay, once I know the slope, I can simply shift the whole thing upwards and uh, the other piece of information that I need to know all the time, probably the single most important piece of information for any sort of reservoir analysis is the initial pressure. If you don't have the initial pressure, um, there's going to be a lot of uncertainty in anything that you're going to do. Okay, even if you've got good production and flowing pressure data, you always have to have the initial pressure. So if I have this slope and I have the initial pressure, I have now created effectively that flowing or that material balance or P over Z line, uh, which declines and can be extrapolated down to the original gas in place. Now this line would normally be uh, interpreted and uh, discovered by plotting shut-in pressures at discrete points in time after certain cumulative volumes have been produced. But if we don't have availability of that data, uh, this is the next best thing. So that's the concept that was uh, Louis Matar and Ralph McNeil's original concept of the flowing gas material balance. One of the limitations that were inherent here at the time, which should be pretty clear, is the assumption of constant rate. Uh, the minute that I start to change the production rates, uh, this graphical procedure doesn't work anymore. 
Okay, so for example, I've got maybe something close to constant right here, but then I'm flattening out the pressures. Uh, maybe the well has gone into a constant pressure decline at that point in time. I can't simply use the same graphical procedure that I was using before. So this doesn't work. Uh, the graphical method, as we were looking at it before, is not going to work in this case. What I really need is I need to discover this line somehow. Okay, but now I, know, I no longer have an easy slope to gauge where that line is. So how am I going to do it? Well, we actually have all the tools to do it already uh, with the pseudo steady state equation. So I'm going to explain how this works. This equation describes the relationship between the average reservoir P over Z and the flowing P over Z. And uh, um, it's a simple relationship, and we know this from the pseudo steady state equation already. The flowing P over Z plus some constant, and just, just by way of a, a, a little bit of an explanation here, um, this equation is an approximation. Uh, the numbers that should really, if you want to be accurate, the numbers that you should be using here are the pseudo pressures, not P over Zs. The reason why we use P over Z is because it's a little more intuitive. Everybody knows what P over Z is and what it means. Pseudo pressure is a little bit more abstract, okay? But when we work with these things inside the software, we're actually using the pseudo pressures. But we, dis we display them as P over Zs because that's what people are used to seeing. All right, so to get our flowing pressure up to the average reservoir pressure, we have to add this constant. And the constant is the product of the flow rate and the B pseudo steady state value, which is the inverse productivity index that we talked about earlier. So this, this guy is sort of the key parameter. We know the flow rate, we know the flowing pressure, but we don't know the B pseudo steady state. You can't get it just from looking at this plot. We also don't know the average reservoir pressure. So we have one equation and two unknowns. So um, at first glance, we're, you know, no, but we do have another constraint or another, uh, another equation that we can apply to this. And let me explain how that works. What you're looking at here is our P over Z flowing plot. So that's easy to plot that data. That comes straight from the spreadsheet of production. And what we're going to do is take a little bit of a leap of faith to start with and just take a wild guess at original gas in place. Okay, maybe cumulative production plus 20%. Okay, so we're gonna take an, a, a stab at what the original gas in place is. What we're next going to do is plot that straight line. Once we know, once we've estimated this, we know the initial pressure, we can estimate this or we can draw this line. We know it's gonna be wrong, but we're gonna draw it anyways. The next step that we're gonna do is calculate all the B pseudo steady state values, okay? And uh, the equation that we use to do that is this one. And it's, the, it's just a restatement of the uh, straight line equation that we showed before. So this B pseudo steady state is gonna be the P over Z at any point on this line. So if we're taking this point in time, whatever value that is, minus the P over Z from the actual data itself, divided by the flow rate. And then that's gonna be a, this B pseudo steady state value. Okay? So that's pretty easy to do. So what have we learned so far? Well, what we learn when we do this is that, is, is the, and this is where the additional constraint that we can apply comes in, is the shape of this thing should be flat. Because remember, this is the one over B pseudo steady state is the productivity index. So the constraint that we apply to make this work is we say, well that, that through time, the progression of that thing should remain constant, all other things being equal, okay? And, and, if, and if we do this interpretation and we see that this has increased a whole bunch, then obviously it hasn't remained constant. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate. We're gonna increase the gas in place and make a different uh, plot and hopefully get it to the point where this, one, this B pseudo steady state number becomes flat, becomes constant, and then we have the right answer. So one over B pseudo steady state should tend towards a flat line. We iterate on original gas in place until this happens. Final step is, is we actually go back from the raw data and produce the true P over Z, the actual static or equivalent static P over Z data based on the raw P over Z data that we have. 
And we do that using the same equation. So this stuff is all generated using the same equation. So the P over Z data now is P over Z flowing plus Q times B pseudo steady state. We now know what this constant is because if you remember, we went back and we actually can measure it right there. Okay, so we know what that number is. We simply multiply that by the flow rate. We add it back to the flowing pressure and then, and then we get our data. And that's really the flowing P over Z uh, formulation. That's how it works. Um, to quickly illustrate, because it may have, may look a little bit better when we can see it done dynamically, I'll go back to my, my uh, boundary dominated flow example and illustrate how this looks in the software. Okay, so we start with our flowing pressure. That's our productivity index plot. And I'm plotting the flowing uh, pressures or the calculated flowing P over Z pressures on there as well. If I have interpreted the incorrect original gas in place, okay, that was our first estimate, uh, the shape of that B pseudo steady state plot is incorrect. If I interpret it being too large, and it's still incorrect, it's going down now. What I really want to do is get it so that it's flat. So the correct answer comes from a straight line that makes that curve flat. And of course, this data should be along that line as well. That's the other indicator. If I've chosen the wrong path for that straight line, then it will be inconsistent with the shape of the calculated P over Z data. So it's usually pretty easy to find the right answer once you bring all these curves together. Um, you can actually do this with a best fit if you want to. It's a straight line best fit of the data. There we go. Hopefully that gives me a, uh, a flat productivity index. And now we have the right answer for original gas in place. So the P over Z, again, is designed to be a um, uh, alternative for a static material balance analysis when we don't have the static data. So it's a very nice practical alternative when all we have available is flowing rates and flowing pressures. Now, of course, there's a huge amount of value if I have both, okay? Um, I'm not sure if I had a static one. I, I do have a static one there as well. So it's a little bit difficult to see, but there's a, a red dot that has shown up on that plot as well. And the red dot is right in line with this data, and that's exactly what you would expect. The red dot is the static pressure. There is one static pressure that was measured in this data set at this cumulative production, and we have that data available. Um, we're plotting that on the same graph because we want to ensure that it's consistent with the flowing data. If the static data and the flowing data are not consistent, then that, there's definitely some diagnostics that we can do to, to understand what's going on. Um, that in, in, a, uh, in a perfect world, that shouldn't happen. In a real world, frequently we do see some differences between those data sets, and that can teach us a lot about what's going on in the reservoir. For instance, if, if there's a divergence between the flowing pressure and the static pressure, the static pressures are up here, the flowing, the flowing pressures are down there, that indicates that we have a, an accumulating damage or a decreasing productivity in the well through time. And that can be very uh, important to diagnose, obviously, because that has a huge impact on how, I'm, as a reservoir engineer, how I'm gonna approach optimizing that system. Um, if these things are right in line with each other, it kind of shows that everything is behaving the way it should, and the productivity is constant through time. 